I thank God for today that I am before you. I am here to talk the word of God. Forget about whom I am, but listen to the only the word of God. Amen. And today I'm going to talk on a topic fulfilling our destiny. Amen. Fulfilling our destiny. I got to understand that God has a destiny. God has a divine destiny to everyone who is here. You can ask me, what do I mean by destiny? But destiny is a divine purpose in our life. As an individual, God has a purpose for us. And as a Christian, God has a purpose for us. I know that to be a Christian, I know that no one will come unto the Lord, but unless the Lord has called you. So if God will call you, then you know that he has a purpose for you Amen. in his kingdom. Amen. And in our personal life, God has a purpose for all of us. Amen. But we are going to see If God has done a purpose for us, will that purpose be automatically or there's something that we need to do to fulfill the divine purpose of God in our life? Amen. I got to understand that when Joshua will be ushered to be the leader of the Israelites, And shall we open to the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. If you are there, you can read for me. <laughs> Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. If you are there, you can read for me. This book of the law... Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Amen. So today I am here to let you know that for us to achieve the purpose of God in our life, there's a principle that we need to do. There's a principle that we need to follow. And as the word of God is telling Joshua that he should not let the book of the law depart from his mouth. He should, he should meditate on it day and night. And after that, that will be a prosperous in his life. And there will be a success in his life. Amen. So today, I am here presenting unto you that if we want to achieve the purpose of God in our life, then we should not let the word of God be out of our way. Amen. If we want to reach our divine destiny, then we should meditate on the word of God. Amen. And as we meditate on the word of God, the word will become part of us, and the word that will come from us will be the word of God. Amen. So God knows that there is a principle for Joshua that he will be able to lead the people of Israel. That's why he told him that he should not let the book of the law. Today I am here presenting unto you that for us to achieve the purpose of God in our life, the word of God Amen. will be the weapon. Amen. The word of God will be the principles Amen. that we shall use to reach our divine destiny. Amen. I am going to talk on two that because God has a purpose for them, God has a divine destination.
destination for them. God of a divine destiny for them. He prepared them. Though they have not got it easy, but because they live faithful to God, because they live and meditate on the word of God, they reach their de hard desire. They have fulfilled the promises of God. They have processed what God has for them. This convinced me that if only we shall take the word of God, brother, we are going to achieve the purpose of God in our Amen. life. Amen. I will talk about these three people and I will talk about four people who miss the promises of God in their life. Who misses the divine purpose of God in their life. Because it was God who called them all right, but because they did not work by the principles of God, they do not fulfill the purpose of God in our life. Amen. So here, I am here to tell you that if only we want to achieve the purpose of God in our life, then we need to be more serious with the things of God. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. The time has come that we know that God is with us. So today I'm also letting you to know that if today you are here, then it is not by accident that you are here. It is the purpose of God in for you that today you need to be here. Amen. If you are in Christian family, then know that it is the purpose of God that you need to be here. Because you, you need to be here to fulfill the purpose of God in your life. Amen. Here is part of your training, your preparation towards our divine destiny in life. First of all, I will talk about Moses. We all know the story about Moses. We know that God has a purpose for Moses. So we, I got to understand that when the other children were dying, the mother was able to hide the child in his house for three good beds. While the others were going around slaughtering the other children, because God has a purpose for Moses, he preserved the life of Moses. For these three men, all the other children were dying. So I got to understand that at that very time, Moses couldn't have a birth mate in his, in, in, during his career. Because all of them were killed. But because God has a purpose for Moses, God preserved the life of Moses to meet the purpose of him in his life. Amen. Amen. But I know that God has a purpose for you. Amen. That's why you are able to make it today. Amen. This kind of something that you went through in life, it shouldn't have been here. It shouldn't have been. You should have been in some place some, at this very time. But God is preparing you Amen. for the divine purpose in your life. Amen. Amen. So in the life of Moses, there is three, four steps that I will talk about Moses. I have talked about his three men. But there came a time that the mother could not under hit the child anymore. But he took a step. That seems to be foolishness. But I, I got to understand that there are some times in our life we may do some decision in life which may seem to be foolish to somebody. But all is part of your divine preparation Amen. towards your, our divine Amen. calling. Amen. Make a basket as we all know. He threw it on the on the Nile. So if somebody may hear, he may think that the mother is getting crazy. But the all is the divine preparation towards the divine purpose of the life of Moses. I got to now understand that God at that very time 
when the mother put the child in the basket onto the river, he was preparing, he was preparing the daughter of Pharaoh to be at that very time, at that very moment, to meet the heart of the child. So because God doing his thing, he has put favor on the, on the new child. He has, his favor is upon the life of Moses. So as soon as, as soon as the daughter of Pharaoh reaches her, the child begins to cry. The child was not crying when the, 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 the woman was not there. But as soon as the woman reached her, the child began to cry. And that is the time the Spirit of God arrests the woman to have the favor. You have the favor. And then I know that if God is able to give favor in his preparation, I know God is going to give you favor in your preparation. That favor. So I'm here to let you know that because of that favor, whatever God that has been close in our life, because today we are going to claim them because the favor of God will not be upon us. He prepared Moses. So as soon as the woman saw him, he had compassion. He had compassion. Though Moses, and he says, this is the son of the Hebrew woman. He knows he's a woman, Hebrew person, because he not already knows that they were killing the Hebrew children, but because of the divine purpose in the life of Moses, he put his favor on Moses and the woman have compassion. Amen. I know and believe that God is going to put compassion on you today. People that have rejected you, people, any door that have been locked upon you, today I'm declaring unto you that the favor of God will be upon you. Wherever you go and they rejected you, try God today. And you see that God is God. Amen. That is the second step in the life of Moses. I've got to understand that God has a divine purpose for Moses. So he needs Moses to be more educated. To be in the camp of the Hebrew. But God knows that if he will be in the camp of the Hebrew, he will also be some of the bricks maker. So he had to make the way unto him that he will be in the house of where he will be able to learn. To fulfill the divine purpose of God. I got to understand that he, that one day I will reveal my mystery about the Christian to him. And unless he is educated, before he will be able to write. So God has a purpose, and that's why he sent him to the house of Pharaoh, whereby he will be able to learn. And I believe that Moses has become a great man of God. Amen. So, the administration of Egypt, he know what they, so he need to know something about administration. He became learned. But God did not call Moses. The purpose is not that he will become Pharaoh. God can't do it. But that is not the purpose. God has a purpose. So when he was well educated, God had to send him to the fourth part in his life. God had to use some circumstances to happen. That he need to move to another area in his life. He made a mistake in life. But that mistake in life is part of the preparation toward divine purpose in his life. But we got to understand with all his education, with all that he, he has learned, and we got to understand he went to the land of media not to be a governor over there, but to be a poor shepherd over there. So I begin to understand that though he not being a shepherd, he will one day sit down 
have made a mistake in life. If he begin to reflect about his past life, whom he is, whom he was, how people serve him, how he got what he wanted, and that day now he became a shepherd, he would say that that mistake in his life is part of the preparation towards the divine purpose in his life. But I know that many of us, we have made a mistake in life. In our decision making, in the step that we do, we stand, sit down, and we say, no, it's a mistake in life. But today I am declaring unto you, what seemed that mistake in your life is part of your preparation towards your divine purpose of God in your life. On the law, unless we meditate on the law, on the word of God, unless we have a good relationship with God, other than that, that failure becomes failure in your life. But when we walk by the principles of God, as the word of God is telling us in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, I know that God will fulfill your destiny. Amen. That means say. It's part of your preparation. Amen. But we got to understand that he became shepherd that for the purpose of God to accomplish in his life. Mm -hmm. Why a shepherd? It is now he, when he finished his theory, he needs to do practicals that will be able to qualify as the leader that the Lord is looking for. Amen. So we got to understand that on the field, he with sheep and we know that those sheep are foolish animals but unless you the shepherd you have time for them Moses have learned a lot on the food he learned how to care for the sheep because God knows that one day he will care for his people Amen. but unless he learned how to care for the sheep that will be his Theopratikas in his life. Amen, amen. So we got to understand that when God has seen he that Moses is a queen, he now called him for the purpose of him, God, in his life. Amen. Brother, today I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you. It is now time that we need, we are saying that we want to see the move of God in our life. It's now time that we need to rely on the Lord for God to use us for his purpose. Amen. I got to understand that there are so many things that will happen in our life. We may not understand, but all those things are purpose of God, the preparation purpose of God in our life. Amen. God is preparing you. I got to understand that us about the week when the bishop came he was telling us something about Saul. We got to understand that when the father sheep or God got loose, Saul took a step. And that step he took to look after. If the sheep or if the God did not lose, Saul would not have made it to the house of Samuel. So I know that that pains, that whatever you are going through need to come in your life. Amen. For the glory of God to be seen in your life. Amen. If you do not pass through these pains, how can you sing a new song? If you do not pass through all those pains, how can you give a testimony? But unless we pass through all those things, that we will one day Stand and say, come and see what the Lord has done. Amen. Because you begin to walk in the right way of God. And he's preparing you. Amen. I know God is touching you. Amen. It's not touching you, but he's preparing us 
to live right before him. Yes. So today, as you are hearing me, it is now time to make a new turn in our life. Yes. We can say amen, but if we do not look or meditate on the word of God, that one, that amen will be meaningless in our life. Yes. Amen. The next person I will talk about, I'm talking about Josh, Joseph. We know that God has a purpose in the life of Joseph. So we got to understand. Joseph make a statement in Genesis chapter 50, verses 20. If you are there, read for me. Because so many things happened in his life. But he is making some declaration to his brothers. If you are there, read for me. Genesis 50, verse 20. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. 50. Hallelujah. 50. But as for you, ye of evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring it to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Amen. Amen. We got to understand that God has a purpose for the life of Joseph. We know that he had a dream. And for him to fulfill that dream, he need to pass through pains and sorrow. I got to understand that it was only 17 years to leave his peaceful home, to leave his father who loved him, to leave his comfortable area. But here, we are going to see four aspects in the life of Joseph. As we have seen four aspects in the life of Moses, we are seeing four aspects in the life of Joseph. He has been, he has experienced the life in the peace. I know that some of us, for the purpose of God to accomplish in our life, we have passed through some circumstances which seem like Joseph in the peace. Begin to imagine when one is in the pits, how he will begin to believe. But he passed through these pains as his preparation towards God, divine purpose in his life. Amen. I got to understand that later they saw him to the Ishmaelites. That is the second phase in the life of this young boy. He has been as a slave. So we got to understand that as a slave, the owner can use you anyhow. Then I got to understand that for the for us to achieve the purpose in our life, we are passed through some circumstances that seem that we are slaves. But here, yeah, that is part of our preparation. Yes. But if we do not live right before God, that preparation, that place that we went through, will be meaningless in our life. Yes. But we need to live right before God. Yes. Brother, now is the time. That we mean we need to be more concentrated to the word of God. Yes. The Lord should not depart from the mouth of Joshua, so that he will be able to lead his people. The word of God should not depart from our mouth, so that we will be able to reach our divine destiny in life. Amen. So we know as a slave, but later he was sold, and he has been in the house of Potiphar. That is the third step in his life. So we, I got to understand that in that house, things went on well 
But later things went on bad in his life. A time came that in the life of Joshua, if it were to be part of this our time, he would say, I have got the chance. But here may he make a statement that he will never defy himself. Because the fear of God is in him. And if the fear of God is in him, then that means he has to fulfill the divine purpose in his life. But if we want to fulfill the divine purpose in our life, then the fear of God would be in us. If we fear God, then we will live right before God. If we fear God, then when we are bringing our, 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 our mothers to pastor, we will say the truth. And we will not say anything like that. Because the, the, the fear of the Lord is on Joseph. So he did not defile himself. And because of that, lead him to another area in his life. Hallelujah. Brother, today as you are hearing me, all that I'm trying to let us know today is that we need to live right before God. Amen. And if we live right before God, God will let his purpose accomplish in our life. I got to understand that in the prison, something happened. And they promise that they will remember him. But when the people, the, the man go, he forget about him. And all of this is the purpose of God in the life of Joseph. If that person have remembered Joseph early, he wouldn't have been the person that will that, that will that will interpret the dream of Pharaoh. But God has to delay it for another two years that Joseph think that they have forgotten him. Right now I'm here knowing that somebody may forget you. But God will never forget you. If only we are living right before him can fail. But God will never fail us. This has assured me that we need to rely on the Lord. This has assured me that we need to go by the precepts course of God, that we shall have a good relationship with God. And by that, I know that God will always let his purpose accomplish in our life. So when God appointed time came, we got to understand that Pharaoh dreamed, and it was that time the cup bearer remembered. Amen. Today I am here to tell, let you know that somebody may remember you. Yeah. Somebody who promised you who will fail you. Because today as we are living right before God, somebody may remember you. Yeah. I pray in the name of Jesus that you be remembered. Yeah. As the camera remembered Joseph, so you will be remembered. Yeah. And we got to understand that from the beat, now he went into the palace Amen. where we got to understand that he became the vice president in Egypt. It is so wonderful. That's why he may have made a, a statement over there and let his brother to know that you plan evil for me. But all that evil is our preparation in the plan of God to fulfill the purpose of God in my life. I know that that purpose will accomplish in our life. But I, I, I am moved with heart. Brother, how do we, we, we behave to those that hate us? Just say, have proof here. He knew that his brothers hit him. That's why he they sold him out of the family. But here he is. He showed kindness to them. Yeah, also.
also it let me to know that brother is now time to show kindness to our those that hate us. Amen. It is also time to make love with those that hate us. Amen. So today I am here to let you know that those that hate us, brother, today that if I will hate you as I am talking, make a good you know with me. Amen. If I will hate you. <laughs> I will let God have compassion on me so that we shall be lovers once again. Amen. And because he lived right, he has fulfilled and he saved the life of many. These are the people who live right before God and God has let them reach their destination. But I know we can make it. It is not too late. It is not too late. If only we shall decide today and begin to walk by the principles of God and ask the mercy of God, God will make it for us. So as you are hearing me today, he has done it for Joseph, he has made it for Moses, and it's time to make it for us. Now, we are going to see four people whom the Lord himself has called. It is no man that called them, but God has called them for the purpose. But because they do not live right before God, they were not able to fulfill the purpose of God in their life. And the first person I will call about Saul, whom God has called whom God had directed to the house of Samuel, whom he was anointed, whom he was being prepared a table before he reached there in God's own time. But because we got to understand that when he became king, because he did not live right before God, though God has called him, but he has missed the divine purpose in his life. We have seen that at the end, he turned away from God. He turned away from God. But then, we will be hearing this. I've talked about the good part, and I'm, I'm positive type, and I'm talking about the negative type as area. We also know something about Solomon. For us, we can hear something when God was about to, to call Saul. When we read 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 17. Time is gone. You can read it. But we have seen about Samson. Samson is somebody whom he was called. In the womb of his mother, God has declared that he will be a Nazarite. That he need to prepare himself for the for the purpose of God, and we have seen that more something. God has used him; he has given him the strength. But because he do not live right before God, we have seen that he is not able to fulfill the divine purpose in his life. The divine purpose of him is to save his people. But because of how he was not a living right before God, he was not able to live to accomplish the divine purpose in his life. We also know about Solomon. We know that the Solomon who asked God, and God has made him rich in wisdom, in knowledge, in prosperity. The people travel from far away to come and see, have advice from him, that God is using him. God has a purpose for him. But because he deviated from the word of God, he was not able to achieve the purpose of God in his life. We are also going to see King Uzziah, who has been one great king, who destroyed so many kings. But because he was not living right, at 
the end, we have seen how his end, he was not able to achieve the purpose of God in his life. Brother, now we have seen Moses live right before God. Joshua live right before God. And God fulfilled his divine purpose in their life. Amen. And because these four people have also missed the divine purpose in his life. Which part are we today? Which part are we today? Like it is now also to take a stock of our life. As you are hearing me, you know yourself more than you, I know you. You know where you are heading to. We know how faithful we are to God. We know how faithful we are to God today. We have heard about him, those three people and we have heard about four people. Which part are we now? Which part are you now? But I'm here to declare to you, it is not too late. Take a decision today, and your life may not be the same. God bless you.